Good day, folks. Heading out for a, another dig. It's 10.30 in the morning here, and it's already so humid that I can barely stand it. 25 Celsius already, which is about 75 Fahrenheit. But anyways, I'm going to give it a shot and try to dig up a couple things. If we don't get anything here, I'll move on to another location, perhaps. As long as I still feel up to it. All right, well, I'll get you down for now, and then I'll get you back up in a little bit. Hang tight. Okay, folks, I'm still on my way into the dig site here, but there's a can there I seen sticking out at the base of this tree, so I scraped around a little bit, looking to see if there's anything else. And this here, at first I thought it was metal, but it isn't, it's stone. Well, I'm not an artifacts expert by any means, by any stretch of the word. That almost looks like it's groove there. I don't know. Maybe some of you guys, if you're familiar with this stuff, might know better than me, for sure. Andy from Artifacts and Big Racks might know. Anyways, maybe it's nothing, but uh, I'm going to hang on to it, and you guys let me know what you think in the comments. All right, over and out. Don't think I'm going to make it, folks. Any normal man would be in the hospital by now, but here I am, still going. <laughs> Okay, folks, I finally made it on site, but I'm not exactly where I normally would be digging. But I just uh, did a test hole and scraped this out. Not sure exactly what it is, but, but anyways, I got another one down in here. It feels like it's whole. And if that other one's any indication of what might be in here, there could be some good ones. Looks like I got two there. Cool, let's check this out. Slick med, and this is a long one. Okay, it's just a sauce bottle. Still though, a couple, couple decent ones, I guess. Okay, I got another one right in that same test hole, folks. It looks like a big green one, possibly a squib bottle. See it there. It is. It's a friggin' massive squib bottle. Design 1927. Awesome. Look at the size of that. It's a green one. I think they say these were uh, witch hazel. Those are the green ones. Nice find. That's a big bottle. Big green one. Okay, folks. I got, yep, I got a big piece of metal here I'm going to lift up and uh, see if there's anything underneath it. All right. Cobalt blue, milk and mag bottle, no embossing though. Well, there's two, two all right. Okay, well, later. 
Got a couple things falling out right here, folks. Little clay pot, and check this out. Pocket knife. Seen better days, but still pretty cool. No telling how old that is. Hey folks, I got what looks to be a good one sticking out here. Looks to be blown, small. Oh man, it might be a warrant of class. Yeah, exactly what I thought. Thought I seen the embossing. It's a nice old blown one though. Check it out. Say cheese. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, viewers, it hasn't cooled off any here. <laughs> I'm gonna get out here, but before I do, I got a couple more finds here. This one here. It's a big embossed bottle. It's got French writing on it. I can see it says here Montreal. I'm not sure exactly what it would have contained. Looks like a syrup liqueur or something. Some sort of like a sauce type bottle. And then also this here come out. Sometimes you find unique finds while well, bottle digging. And this appears to be like an iron holder. Would sit like that. Those are the legs on the bottom. Three legs. So that's a pretty cool find. I'm going to take that as well. Try to clean it up. All right. Uh, this is probably the last find, so we'll see you on the cleanup. I'll dig around a couple more minutes, so if I find anything, I'll get you back up. But if not, see you on the cleanup. Well, one more find, folks. Check it out. It's a side embossed. Em, side embossed. It's a Twitchell Champlain. Side embossed corker. And this side says uh, neuralgic anodyne. Cool beans. Later. Good day, YouTubers. Hope everybody's doing well today and enjoying the day. Um, this uh, dig turned out pretty good, actually. I was pleased with it. Uh, haven't been having real good luck lately, but so this was kind of a bonus for me. We've got some interesting items here and some things other than bottles. So let's start off with this big, huge squib bottle, which I put that cap on it. It cleans it up pretty nicely. Let me get focused there. And you can see it says squib up on the shoulder here. It's real faint. And again, on this side it does as well. But on this side it says down here, registered 1927. Well, that's a big one. And other than that, the next largest one I've found is this one here. So you can see there's quite a size difference there. And this one is registered 1932. It says on the bottom. Let me see if we can show that. Yeah, right up. Right up here, this one's 1932. Nice strong embossing on that one. Then we got this one here. It is a syrup liqueur. I'm not French, so I do speak a little bit, but I'm probably not going to pronounce that very well, so I'll just leave it at that. A syrup liqueur. And this here. There is an, uh, one example online and actually has the label still on it. And this is what the label says. It's the highest grade of French liqueur can be obtained by mixing the content of this bottle with half the quantity of pure alcohol. So you would take this and you would mix that with uh, basically your rubbing alcohol <laughs> and uh, you'd have the finest French liqueur. 
All right. We've got a lip chip right here, which is really a shame. But anyways, that's a nice little bottle. No idea on the year. Probably 20s would be my guess, 1920s. Next we got this here, uh, Twitchell Champlain's Neuralgic Anodyne. And this is, uh, as far as I know, it's made in Portland, Maine, and it's probably going to be around the 1920s. And it was a pain reliever. Neuralgic Anodyne Pain Reliever. Moving right along, we got this lovely... Aqua blue warranted flask, blown in a mold, strap side. However, the base is all bruised up here, which is a real shame because that's a beauty of a bottle. I'm going to keep it anyways. I think that's like six or seven I found this year. <laughs> I've never found any before until this year, and I've got a whole collection of them now. Yeah, next we just got the sauce bottles, a slick. This one here, I don't think was on the video. It's just, you know, a slick beer or something. It's a nice blue color. But uh, that's probably about as common as some of the other finds I see on other people's videos. <laughs> I don't find many of those. <laughs> this one here is a nice uh, strap side cobalt blue milk and magnesia bottle. Probably from the 50s. I want to show this one. I don't normally show these little round uh, Vix bottles, but this here, this is an early Vix bottle, and you can tell by the double triangle here. Well, that's going to date it on the 1910s to 1930s. Okay? So if you see the double triangle, that's an early one. Single triangle is later. Alright, in case some of you folks didn't know. This here is a Lander Petroleum Jelly. Manganese glass, 1915 or before. It's got a lip chip up here, which I didn't notice until I got it home and cleaned it up. Lander Petroleum Jelly. So that would be like Vaseline or something, right? That's a petroleum jelly as well. A little clay pot. Didn't clean up very well little pocket knife. He's a bit crusty and rusty. But still a nice different find. And then this here is going to be your Enterprise get focused. Enterprise Manufacturing Company Philadelphia. And this is a sad iron rest. And it dates to 1890s. A sad iron is just one of those big chunks of iron with a handle on it right and it would rest on this okay so that's pretty cool I put that through electrolysis cleaned it up nice and then put a nice uh, layer of flat black heat resistant paint on it and it is beauty now that I know how to do the electrolysis or reverse electrolysis whatever it's called well, that's going to be a game changer doing that on some of this stuff and finally, we got this here. I don't know quite what to say about this. I still think it's uh, <laughs> it's too perfect not to be formed that way by man. I don't know. It's a stone, and this groove here looks like it's, I don't know, purposefully there. It's almost rusty. It's almost got a rusty appearance on this side. But it feels like a sandstone. I found one uh, site, I guess, online talking about something similar to that where the iron would all leach out of an iron product and be replaced by sand, which takes on a sandstone appearance. But uh, like I said, I could only find one article on it. So I don't know if that's the case here or not, but it's very interesting. And I don't know. I don't know if that's anything or not, but it sure looks like it's something, doesn't it? Looks like an axe head to me. <laughs> Anyways, tell me what you think. Okay, folks, well, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Get focused here. Thanks for watching. And, uh, 
Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. What?